Hey everybody, Matt Coley here. I swear to God, this is going to be a short video, short video, short video, short video. This video is about the handout at the beginning of your game that you give to your players to kind of let them know what is going on and what they are in store for. We did a video uh, a couple of months ago about pitching your campaign to your players, but that was predicated on the notion that you might have more than one idea for a game you'd like to run and you want to give your players a menu. That's what pitching your campaign was about. It was about how to itemize the menu so the players can clearly and easily see the difference between one of your ideas and another and pick the one that they would have the most engagement in and sort of set expectations. But the other the flip side of that is your campaign handout. The documents, and there may be more than one, but we're going to argue in favor of only one, that you give your players in preparation for the game so they know what kind of characters to make and what your world is about. And the reason I think this is going to be a short video is because I think your handout should be short. This is something I've learned. This is a hard fought lesson that I learned over many years is that if you you know this from writing emails, right? Like if you write an email that's more than just a couple sentences long, the odds that somebody's going to read it is very small. And also me like pitching games to publishers back when I was in the video game business. One of the things we learned is that if you can't do it very quickly and with bullet points, people check out, they get bored, they don't want to read the entire thing. So it is my personal opinion that especially if you have new players, new to D&D or new to your game, the best handout is a short handout. I try to keep it to one page. And you'll see in the doobly-doo, there is a link to the handout I sent to my friends for the Matt O'Driscoll D&D game that I've been running. Oh, D&D, we call it. And if you have ideas for how to pitch your game, obviously, I'm a little busy right now and I'm not really uh, I don't really have time to audit people's D&D games, although I get a lot of requests for that. I do encourage you to come by our subreddit. There's a link in the doobly-doo and say here, hey, this is my campaign handout. What do you folks think? Because the folks on our subreddit, the folks in our discord, the folks in YouTube comments and on Twitter, our community is pretty amazing. And so I think you'll get some really good feedback. What is the purpose of a handout? It is to make clear the assumptions of your world so that when the players are making characters, they will fit into that world and they will be much more likely to have fun playing. So what makes a good campaign handout? I think there are a handful of elements. First, we'll talk more about this, but it should be short because if it's short, it's more likely to be read and it doesn't do any good to write a whole bunch of really interesting stuff if nobody reads it. It should clearly and dramatically lay out the central tension of your world. We did a whole video on that. This is super important to me. It should inform your players about the way your world will react to their characters so that they make informed decisions during character creation. And if there is an adventure, if there's a built in adventure that they're already sort of on the hook for, and you'll see an example of this in the handout I gave to Matt Driscoll and the rest of the group group, then this is a good opportunity to set up that adventure. Don't be coy. Don't beat around the bush. You only got one page, so you have to use your language dramatically and economically. It is a period of civil war. That is a great statement to open a campaign pitch with. It's dramatic, it's evocative, and it implies a lot. If we use our language economically, then we end up implying a whole bunch of stuff about our world, which is accurate, but we didn't have to come out and say it, which is really tedious. If we open dramatically, that gives us the opportunity to say segue into describing our central tension. For instance, if we say it's a period of civil war, now the players are immediately going to want to know who are the two different sides in this civil war and what are they fighting over? But for instance, in my campaign, I say it's an age of chaos. There is no civil war. The inciting incident, and we did a whole video about this, the, the steady state world, the inciting incident and all that stuff. The inciting incident is the death of good King Omen. And the fact that now the world is fallen sort of into disrepair, the forests are taking over, the roads are falling apart, and the rule of law is now only a memory. This is what I mean about using language economically. I haven't laid out the fact that there's going to be a lot of bandits on the road, that any kind of law are tiny pockets of civilization surrounded by seas of wilderness, but I am implying all of that. And it says a lot about what type of campaign I'm going to be running. I am not going to be running a Lord of the Rings style campaign where the players are going to find the one ring and spend the entire campaign trying to throw it into Mount Doom and permanently change the world world and save everyone. It's more going to be like the Hobbit where, hey, there's a bunch of treasure under this mountain. Let's go steal it. We've opened with a dramatic statement. We've segued into our central attention. Now it's time to let our players know how 
our world will respond to their choices in character creation. This is, I think, one of the most important things your handout can do. If your world is generic fantasy land, for instance, you sort of don't need this. But if you have made decisions about your world, if, for instance, a player playing a paladin will be expected to uphold the laws of chivalry, then they need to know that because when they meet NPCs in the world, they will look to this paladin character as an authority. If religions have been outlawed, for instance, by St. Ajax the Invincible, the players need to know this because if they're going to make a cleric that is going to impact everything that happens to them and when they go to a town or they meet a villager these people will have certain reactions to the player characters the players need to know what those reactions are going to be ahead of time you can dramatically alter the assumptions of the player's handbook and say for instance that there's a bounty on the head of all dragonborn that's fantastic just make sure the players know that when they are making their characters because if the players have one idea of who their character is and what their character arc could be and you have already subverted that and they don't have those options even before they've started they need to know that you're going to have a huge misalignment and some unhappy players you can see this in the handout i wrote for od and every time i start a new game for new players i tweak my handout a little bit to make it more readable and more direct and i think so far as a result this is the best one i've done i think there are probably better handouts in the future but for right now i'm pretty proud of this one it lays out on a ancestry by ancestry basis how each choice the players make will affect how people in the world perceive them. You may have a completely different set of assumptions. It may be more about the role of itinerant campaigners and adventurers in your world and what types of adventures are they going to be going on. This is important if you already know what types of adventures you want to run and what type of world it is, this is the place to let the players know. They might be making a character looking forward to having some great soap opera romantic backstory play out in the game. But if you're running a Conan game where we're just going to climb the Tower of the Elephant to steal the ruby inside for no reason other than no one's ever done it before those soap opera players who are hoping to have you know their lost twin show up and that the the girl they loved is, is still alive and looking for them this is again another huge misalignment that the players need to know about the shorter my handouts got as i became a dungeon master the more effective they were and the more fun the players had and the more fun i had there's nothing virtuous or special about fitting your campaign handout on one page, except that it is an arbitrary constraint that fuels creativity. And I found that by restricting myself to one page, I was able to very effectively laser focus on the things the players needed to know in order to make characters. This is a rule I invented for myself purely for new campaigns and new players. For the chain of Acheron, for instance, there was a huge handout because the player characters could be from anywhere in my world. So I tried to dramatically write up something that would be fun to read that also described all the different regions in my world. There are lots of things I could have put in this handout that aren't in there. For instance, how lethal is my game? What are the assumptions about life and death? Should the players be prepared to have their characters die? My handout doesn't say anything about that, which I think implies that they don't have to worry about it. Lastly, if you've got an adventure on deck, this was, by the way, very effective for the Matt O'Driscoll D&D group. If you have an adventure on deck, feel free to lay out the assumptions of that adventure what do the players know at the beginning of the adventure? Because this saved a lot of time. It saved a lot of how do we know each other. Each player was able to independently read this handout, make their own characters, and then show up at the table and quickly talk about their backstories. And it, as a result, they kind of self-organized and two of the players decided that they knew each other and they signed up together. They would not have been able to do this if they had not known what there was to sign up for. This notion of, as you can read in the handout, a caravan going through the forest. If you're running a campaign where the players are going to meet in a tavern, put that in your handout. Say, this is the name of the tavern. This is where it is in the world. These are the kinds of people that show up there. Your character is one of these people. That's it. That's the video. We're producing a lot of content right now. I want you folks to know that it's not all just the chain of Akron. We're gonna keep doing running the game videos. I did a poll on Twitter asking which video people wanted to see next. I asked about doing a hot start video, which you just got to see with the first episode of the chain of Akron, sort of starting in the middle of things and how I do that. I've done it several times. I asked folks if they wanted to see the player handout uh, video. And then the other one was a video about, the other topic was about addressing the very common 
issue of players sort of being wang rods at the table and justifying it by saying, well, that's what my character would do. That's a very that's a classic excuse that goes back decades that I still see, uh, you know, on Reddit and on Twitter every once in a while. I asked folks what they wanted to see. This was the video they voted on. I think next video will be the hot start video since we just did one of those. I know I promised you folks a one on one how to run D&D for just you and one other person. And we will do that. But I am waiting until we have a moment in the chain of Acheron campaign for me to actually run a one on one session. And then we will use that session in the notes and the prep to explain the, as the example in the video. As usual, we do not run ads. We are completely funded by you folks. If you want to support the channel, you can go pick up a copy of Strongholds and Followers, which is selling really well and very popular. You got to see some of it used in the game. We're using retainers. We use the warfare rules. If you pick up Strongholds and Followers, I promise you three things. First, it, it's very pretty. You will see art in there you really like. Two, it will be fun to read. Third, there will be something in there that you want to steal. 20 bucks in PDF. That's a not, not, not a bad deal. 30 bucks in hardcover. The hardcover is being printed as we speak. I have no idea when it's going to end up shipping to the warehouses when I know you folks will find out. Also, we have a Patreon now because people were asking us to start a Patreon. And so the running the game videos are always going to be free. We don't really have any paywalled content, but we did do a, a, a show called Chain Reaction. And the questions for the players in the Chain Reaction show came from our Patreon. So that currently is our only Patreon reward, but we're trying to think of more. That's it, folks. I think the next video will be hot start. Until then, peace out.